Putin and the intelligence community's million-dollar question. Now that Ukraine has launched its long-awaited counteroffensive, Western leaders are searching for indicators that the country's new actions are having an effect on Russian President Vladimir Putin's outlook. Not only Western leaders, but also some of the most experienced former senior CIA officers who have served inside Russia, are concerned about what Putin is thinking in terms of a long-term strategy for the war, maintaining control over the narrative playing out inside Russia, and the strategic impact of nuclear threats. To paraphrase, the cipher brief has become the most popular outlet for former intelligence officers. No media outlet is even a close second to the cipher brief in terms of the number of articles published by formers. Studies in Intelligence, Volume 62, Issue September 2018 Become a Cypher Brief subscriber plus member to gain access to all of the Cypher Brief's expert insight focused on national security. On Wednesday, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. said he thinks Russia acted in good faith during the Kremlin's invasion of Ukraine and that the United States bears heavy responsibility for the ongoing war. After declaring his candidacy for the Democratic nomination in April, Kennedy gave an interview to Sirius XM's The Briefing with Steve Scully. Scully questioned Russian President Vladimir Putin's persistence in seizing territory in Ukraine despite widespread international condemnation. While Kennedy insisted that baby steps toward negotiation were the way forward, the host pointed out that Putin has thus far rejected such calls unless Russia retains the territory it has already claimed. No, no. Kennedy claimed that Putin had answered yes several times. He did negotiate. In fact, he signed two separate agreements. He signed on to both the Minsk Accord and an even more comprehensive agreement in 2022 that would have left Ukraine largely untouched. We were the ones who coerced Zelensky into undermining the pact. It had already been signed, he said. The Russians, as you well know, were in fact making good faith efforts. Consequently, I contend that we have been the ones to act in bad faith. Since it began in February 2022, the United States has repeatedly urged Russia to cease the invasion. State Department spokesman Antony Blinken said last week that Russia could end the conflict, at any time by withdrawing its forces from Ukraine and stopping its brutal attacks against Ukraine's cities and people. However, Putin has stated that Ukraine will not prevail and has vowed to continue. This week, Kennedy claimed that the war was responsible for creating a relentless mentality of foreign domination in the United States, continuing a pattern of rhetorical support for Russia. Also, he's referred to this war as a proxy war. When asked about Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Kennedy said, I abhor Russia's brutal and bloody invasion of that nation, during a speech he gave on Tuesday in New Hampshire. But we have to realize that our government is partly to blame for this situation, as it has been deliberately prodding Russia since the 1990s. Later on Wednesday, Kennedy posted a video to Twitter where he criticized us versus them, thinking and mentioned his uncle, President John F. Kennedy, who installed a direct line between himself and Soviet leader Khrushchev. Kennedy also addressed the doubts and criticisms of his political stances and his candidacy for the Democratic nomination. Kennedy's own family has been vocal in their criticism of his role as one of the most influential propagandists of anti-vaccine misinformation. His popularity within the anti-vaccination community has grown in the wake of the COVID-19 epidemic, and he is currently polling at a respectable level in the Democratic primary against incumbent Vice President Joe Biden. Kennedy said on Sirius XM, there is not a charitable view toward me in the mainstream media. And the only thing I would say is that people shouldn't believe the things they're reading about me in the mainstream media. Instead, they should listen to my own words and not accept the characterizations as necessarily true. There seems to be an almost frantic need to discredit me, to marginalize me, to vilify me, he continued.